Chapter 10 The Civil Disobedience Movement In the Lahore session, full powers regarding the launching of the civil disobedience movement were given to Mahatma Gandhi. Before launching the movement, Gandhiji put forward various demands such as abolition of salt tax, prohibition of liquor and end of the monopoly right of the government to manufacture salt. But the government rejected those demands. Gandhiji, therefore, decided to start a country-wide satyagraha by breaking the Salt Act. Salt was a daily necessity and it was freely available in nature. It was, therefore, unjust to impose a tax on it. The Salt Satyagraha was symbolic. In a broader sense, the Salt Satyagraha signified the breaking of all the oppressive and unjust laws of the British government in a peaceful way. The civil disobedience movement included picketing liquor shops and shops selling foreign cloth as also conducting a no-tax campaign. Thus the movement was broad in its nature. The Dandi March Gandhiji decided to launch the Salt Satyagraha at Dandi in Gujarat. On the 12th of March 1930, Gandhiji set out from Sabarmati Ashram with 78 of his followers for launching the Salt Satyagraha. Along with others, Sarojini Naidu and Mithuben Petit also accompanied him. In his march from Sabarmati to Dandi, covering a distance of 385 kilometers, people joined him in very large numbers. On the 6th of April, Gandhiji picked up the salt on the seashore at Dandi and broke the Salt Act. Thus began the nationwide civil disobedience movement. The Peshawar Satyagraha In the northwest frontier province, Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan was the most loyal follower of Gandhiji. He was known as the Frontier Gandhi. He had founded an organization called Khuda-i Khidmatgar, Servants of God. He began a Satyagraha at Peshawar on 23 April 1930. The town was in the hands of the Satyagrahis nearly for a week. The British government ordered the platoons of the Garhwal Rifles to open fire on the Satyagrahis. But Chandra Singh Thakur, who was an officer of the Garhwal Rifles, refused to open fire. He was court-martialed and was given a severe punishment. The British government found itself in a difficult situation due to the Satyagraha launched by Gandhiji. Gandhiji was arrested on 4th May 1930 and government repression was let loose. The entire nation strongly condemned Gandhiji's arrest. The Solapur Satyagraha The mill workers were in the forefront of the Solapur Satyagraha. They observed a hartal on 6th May 1930. Police stations, courts, the railway station and municipal buildings were attacked. It was practically people who ruled Solapur. At last, the government called in the army. Martial law was imposed and thus the movement in Solapur was suppressed. Malappa Dhanshetti, Shri Krishna Sarda, Kurban Hussain and Jagannath Shinde were hanged for their participation in the Satyagraha. Dharasana Satyagraha After the arrest of Gandhiji, the leadership of the Satyagraha at Dharasana in Gujarat passed on to Sarojini Naidu. The police lati charged the satyagrahis who came forward to break the salt act. The satyagrahis quietly suffered the blows of the lati. When they were finally taken away by the congress workers for medical aid, another batch of satyagrahis came forward to replace them. This continued endlessly. In Maharashtra, there were salt satyagrahas at Wadala, Marwan, Shiroda and other places. Where there were no salt pans, people began to break the forest laws. There were jungle satyagrahas at many places such as Bilashi, Sangamner, Kalwan, Chirner and Pusad in Maharashtra. Adivasis joined the jungle satyagraha in large numbers. Martyrdom of Babu Genu Satyagrahis in Mumbai tried to obstruct the trucks loaded with foreign goods. Babu Genu, a mill worker, was at the forefront. He threw himself down in front of a truck to stop it 
and did not budge even after police threats. In the end, he was crushed under the truck. The martyrdom of Babu Genu proved to be a source of inspiration for the national movement. Participation of Women Women participated in the Satyagraha struggle in large numbers. They took the initiative in picketing shops selling foreign goods and liquor. Hundreds of women suffered imprisonment. They faced the police atrocities courageously. Kasturba Gandhi, Kamala Devi Chattopadhyay, Avantika Bai Gokhale, Leelavati Munshi, Hansa Ben Mehta and many other women took the initiative in the Satyagraha. The First Round Table Conference The British Prime Minister Ramsay MacDonald organized a conference at London in 1930 to discuss certain constitutional issues related to India. It was known as the Round Table Conference. The different political parties in India and the rulers of the princely states sent their representatives to attend the conference. However, the Indian National Congress did not participate in this conference. The National Congress was a body that represented the country. Without the Congress, the deliberations in the Roundtable Conference were indeed meaningless. The British Prime Minister expressed a hope that the Congress would join the second round of discussions. In view of the British Prime Minister's appeal, the Viceroy of India released Gandhiji and other leaders from the prison. Thus, a conducive atmosphere was created for the Congress to discuss the issues freely. Gandhi Irwin Pact A pact was concluded between Mahatma Gandhi and the Viceroy Irwin. It is known as the Gandhi Irwin Pact. According to this pact, the British government gave a guarantee that the system of responsible government would be adopted in the proposed constitution for India. The Congress withdrew the civil disobedience movement and showed its readiness to participate in the Second Roundtable Conference. The Second Roundtable Conference The Second Roundtable Conference was held in 1931. Gandhiji attended the conference as the representative of the Indian National Congress. Along with the Congress, the British government had also invited representatives of the various castes, communities, political parties and of the princely states. The government raised the issue of minorities in this conference. There were differences of opinion among the representatives on this issue as also on the nature of the federal constitution. Gandhiji tried to secure a consensus but his efforts proved to be futile. Therefore. Gandhiji returned to India, disappointed. The Third Roundtable Conference The Third Roundtable Conference was convened in 1932, but the Congress boycotted it. Therefore, this conference also proved to be meaningless. The Pune Pact Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar had represented the Dalits in the Roundtable Conferences. There he had demanded separate electorates for the Dalits. After the second roundtable conference, the British Prime Minister Ramsay MacDonald declared the communal award. Accordingly, separate electorates were declared for the Dalits. This division of the Hindu society brought about by the communal award was not acceptable to Gandhiji. Therefore, against this award, he began his fast unto death in the Yerwada prison. The leaders of the Indian National Congress appealed to Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar to reconsider his demand. In the interest of the nation, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar accepted this request. A pact was concluded between Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar and Mahatma Gandhi at Pune in 1932. This is known as the Pune Pact. According to this pact, instead of separate electorates, it was decided to give 148 reserved seats in the legislature to the Dalits. Later, the British government gave its consent to this arrangement. The Second Phase of the Civil Disobedience Movement After his return to India from the Second Roundtable Conference, Gandhiji decided to resume the Civil Disobedience Movement. The government arrested him immediately. This created discontent among the people. 
the government responded to this movement with inhuman repression. All civic rights were strangled. The Indian National Congress and their associate organizations were declared illegal. Their offices and funds were confiscated. The nationalist press and literature were kept under strict surveillance. In April 1934, Gandhiji withdrew the movement and the historic phase of the civil disobedience movement came to an end.